love it. Five star love. It does work with Windows 10, which is a huge thing because the last one I had, same pricing range, just I could not get it to work with Windows 10. I tried for so long. I even went back and forth with the manufacturer. They were telling me all kinds of things such as turn off your antivirus. I no, it wasn't the antivirus. In fact, I installed this with AVG fully on and all that. No problems. They were telling me, oh, you have an Acer, so you have touch screen. Uh, enable, turn that off. Well, no, it's a non-touch screen model. So it, back and forth, back and forth, and I never got it to work. Uh, I don't remember the branding. I would have to look up my one-star review. <laughs> this was actually really easy. Uh, first thing you do is simply turn, I mean, put in the CD, and there's the contents there. I'm showing the contents to highlight something that when you first put it in the D CD, it pops up a useless splash screen that gives you three buttons, Win drivers, Mac drivers, and uh, PDF manuals. Manuals. I say useless because when you click one of the buttons, it all it does is pop up the File Explorer window. That's all it does. <laughs> I mentioned this because when I first did that, I clicked Win drivers and I was watching my CD driver and nothing was happening. I was like, oh no, don't tell me another bad disk. I must have sat there like 30 seconds or more with a sinking heart until I looked at my left monitor on my main PC and it was like, oh wait a minute, there it is. It just simply popped out the File Explorer window. So you can skip the whole auto run thing and go straight to File Explorer. And in this case, WinDriver and the very first one listed there is the drivers for this model, the 1060 Plus. So you just double click it. Also on there is basically drivers for all their different models, uh, both Macintosh and Windows. As well as the manual, I actually I did read through the manual for Windows, and it's really not complicated stuff. It is our learning curve and getting used to the feel of it and what have you? But uh, as hardware, it's actually rather simple. Double click it, and you're ready to go. Now, just for those that it may matter to, the drivers are not certified by Microsoft. They are indeed unsigned drivers. Personally, I don't care. Uh, it doesn't matter one bit. I, a, I already have very robust security through AVG on this, and B, it, I, I don't really, honestly, don't think anything untoward is going to happen because you have uncertified by Microsoft uh, drivers for graphics tablets. But if it does matter to you, regardless of what my opinion is, take note, absolutely. But for me, it's hit yes and we're good to go now this is a remote monitor off my main PC that has dual monitor so I'm going to use a little remote control here to switch to my main monitor where I already have sketchbook pro a little up with a little you know thing I've been working on with this graphic graphics tablet fun stuff now for setting the options it just go over here on your taskbar wherever it may pop up but right there is that little icon there that says graphics tablet we'll double left click it to bring up the settings uh, mainly to you know uh, pressure t sensitivity as well as the shortcut keys if you right click it it brings up a little exit floaty window and that's what you use to actually exit out of the software if you so desire until you open it up again uh, but go ahead and we'll just double click it and bring it up and there it is. Now you'll notice I've got the first and second button set to none. And that is because if I had to have a complaint about anything, and it's really not a complaint, it's more like just getting used to the interface, uh, but it's really easy to hit these buttons. I have to, if the buttons are set to like a mouse click or anything like that, I can't, I have to really make sure I'm holding it absolutely in the right position because if it's too far over, I have a tendency personally to accidentally click that button. It's the very easy to click. It's mainly the first button I have the problem with. So, you know, I probably down the road will just keep the first button un unused and then the second one as a mouse button. Just because I just have a tendency of accidentally clicking it. That's why, though, I do have both of them unassigned. But you can, of course, assign them anything you'd like, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Uh, in fact, we'll go ahead and set the second button to a left click. But if you want to do a keyboard key, you just choose the key, alpha numeric as well as special characters, and then if you want to add a control, alt, shift command to it. But in this case, we're going to actually set the second button to left click, just like that. Alright, we'll hit apply. And then 
pressure pen pressure test there and then last but not least event setting which really isn't all that advanced it lets you set the active workspace on the tablet itself if you want to make it smaller and then on the side is your shortcut keys like for instance K1 which is on here this one that would be K2 this would be K3 it's the same thing that you saw with the pen buttons so easy 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 and yes you can actually set it to left hand right here on the side to orientate it for left handed use and then you're at it. That's it. That's like I said, not very complicated at all. Uh, and the pen response. Oh, go ahead. Now, when you leave the pen sitting for a few minutes, it does go to sleep per se. So in order to wake it up, you just go and just tap it off, tap it on the thing there to wake it up. And then we're right there. Now, you notice how far away I am from the pad. That's it's sensitive. That's how far away you can keep it to drag the cursor around. Now, if I lift it up so it stops responding, like right there, and then move it over to another part, it is relative to the screen. It'll merely bring it right there. See off to the side. In fact, I whoops went too far. Let's hit control <laughs> undo. There you go. bring it around. I lifted it up so the cursor didn't drag around. I'm just moving to a new part of the screen and then drag it around there and then touch it to the pad. Alright. Very simple. So it's all relative to the actual screen, uh, your actual display. Uh, so simple as that it really is I love it so there you have it you guys have yourself a great one